I'm Marge Power, and I'm a board member of the Barry Historical Society, uh, which is the owner of this building, the Socialist Labor Party Hall, which is a national historic landmark. We're standing in the main hall of the Socialist Labor Party Hall. Uh, the hall was built in 1900 uh, by a group of Italian uh, granite cutters uh, who had come over from Italy to work in the granite sheds. Uh, many were sculptors, others were more mundane granite cutters, but they banded together um, and bought the piece of land on Granite Street where the hall is now located. And they built, they raised the money, and with donated labor and other labor, they built this building. The hall was originally conceived of as a kind of multi-purpose community center. And this main room was the, what would you call it, the entertainment area. Uh, it was used for gatherings of all kinds. They had lectures here because the, um, the workers were self-educating. So they constantly had um, uh, educational lectures. They had people coming up from New York, uh, leaders of their movement, to talk to them about the various issues of the day. This is the front hall, the main entrance of the old labor hall. It was the only entrance during the heyday of the hall. And it's most famous for an incident that took place here in August of 1903. The editor of the Socialist Labor Party Italian language paper, Il Proletario, was due to come up from New York to speak. And a big crowd had gathered. The train that he was coming on was delayed. And the crowd, perhaps fueled by passion or alcohol or a little of both, started mixing it up. The anarchists and the socialists started discussing politics, always an inflammatory combination here. All the crowd were milling around here on the front steps and in the hall waiting for the guest speaker to arrive when they got heated, as the old description says, to the boiling point. And then Goretto, who had a gun with him, fired two shots. One hit Vogini, who survived, and the other hit Ilya Cordy who was taken to the hospital in Montpelier, but the next day he died after identifying the man who shot him. I won't go into whether or not the shooting was an accident or intentional. If you talk to people in town, you'll find that there are both stories circulating. Uh, but the upshot was that after Cordy's death, his brother, carved one of the most celebrated memorials in Hope Cemetery, um, showing Cordy full length, seated with his carving instruments at the side of him. And it is a well-known, famous, and very beloved memorial. I'm Joella Mulvaney, and I'm a people's historian by that I mean I have no PhDs, but I have a deep abiding interest, uh, especially in the more radical move, political movements and social movements of my community, Barry City, Vermont, and uh, uh, the United States and, and the world. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from uh, when I speak about what happened here in Barry City. I first became interested and intrigued with the history of Barry City when I rode past, on my bicycle, I rode past the uh, 46 Granite Street, which is a brick building, and I looked up above the beautiful double doors and saw an emblem that was fascinating. It was uh, a, an arm and hammer, the, the typical kind of uh, labor movement type of image that I, I knew well about. 
Um, and I wondered what this building was because the sign on it said Vermont Tomato Pack. And uh, it was at that time a Vermont a, a company that packed tomatoes. Um, so oh, I went first to the city records to look at uh, the building records to see who had owned it uh, previous to this and traced it back to about 1900 when I saw something that really surprised me. I saw a deed written entirely in Italian and then about two weeks later translated into English. My assumption was that uh, the Anglo folks who were in charge of City Hall at that time didn't even know that it was written in Italian to begin with and then said, wait a second, we can't have this, this document not be in English. The translation I found out later was not exactly accurate, but the thing that really uh, surprised me was at the bottom, usually you see one or two people may own a piece of property, but at the bottom of this deed were 46 signatures. And I certainly could understand, even in Italian, the word cooperativa. So this, this really piqued my interest, and I began to do some deeper research about the building. The women in the community were the backbone and the background. For example, when uh, Goretto, who shot uh, Ilia Cordi in the labor hall, uh, was finished with the gun, a child was told, bring this to Noni. And the child ran down the street and gave it to his grandmother, who hid it in her flower bin for weeks until it could be buried in the backyard. Because they never found the gun, Goretto was never accused of murder. He was never convicted of murder. He was convicted of manslaughter and served only a couple of years. Another way that we can find out about the women is uh, to look at the, um, the situation when Emma Goldman came to town. Emma Goldman was a very popular figure in Barry, and she came several times and actually lived here for months at a time while she was helping out with the organize, uh, different uh, movement organi organizations. Uh, one time when she came here, she was, doing a, uh, she was going around the country doing a tour that involved six lectures in each community. The first lectures were all about cooperation and all about union organizing and labor issues. But then she was going to do a lecture on um, women's issues, such as femini different feminist issues, including things like birth control. Now, when she came to this community and they knew that she was going to, she wanted to meet the women. She met all of the men in the industry. She met lots of the labor organizers, but they were all men. So what she wanted to do was meet the women and she asked them, Ask them, please introduce me to the women. Well, the men would did not want to introduce them to their own, introduce her to their own wives, probably for a couple of reasons. One, for cultural reasons, they were uh, perhaps not fully feminist themselves, uh, but they also didn't really want her to necessarily radicalize their wives, but also they wanted to protect their wives. So when they brought her out into town, they brought her to the homes that were the uh, grappa houses and the brothels. These were the women who were in business for themselves because they had no husbands to take care of them and their families. Generally, uh, their husbands had died from silicosis. So when she went to visit one of these homes, um, she found, she was introduced in the dining room to the chief of police and the mayor of the town who happened to frequent this particular grappa house. They had been drinking and were fairly drunk. And when, of course, they discovered who she was and what she was doing in town and the fact that she had seen them in this place of ill repute, they came to her rooming house that night, took her almost bodily out of the place, put her on a train and sent her out of town. Now, my theory is that uh, this was in the nick of time because if she had begun talking about feminist issues, that might not have gone over so well with her hosts. Okay. Luigi Galliani, who's a very famous anarchist, also lived in Barry City. He actually lived on my street, Pleasant Street, for three or four years after he escaped from the Patterson Silk Strike into Canada. He came into Barry and settled here in this community. And the reason that he did that, and the reason the IWW were here, is because this community was well known nationally for being a hotbed of radicalism.